Good afternoon. I'm Abe. And I'm Frank. And today, we're focusing on one of the hardest parts of the AP test, the DBQ. We'll show you how to write an A plus DBQ that'll get you that five. So let's get started. Sounds good. All right, Abe, show us this PowerPoint that you've made. Well, I gotta admit, Frank didn't want me to show this PowerPoint because he insisted that it would be too boring. It is. Yeah, I completely agree, but it's necessary for us to learn how to write a DBQ. Necessary evil. Yeah, so let's go. Let's talk about the grading system of a DBQ. You get one point for having a thesis. You get another point for analysis, you get another three points for analysis of documents, and you get another point for analysis of outside examples. The College Board does want to make sure that you actually did learn some American history throughout the year. <laughs> Abe didn't. I did. <laughs> You get another point for contextualization. This is basically uh, connecting historical phenomena that you talk about to uh, broader historical phenomena. So taking the historical stuff that you discuss and then connecting it to other historical stuff. Uh, you get another point and you get your final point for synthesis. And that's basically just uh, the overall persuasiveness of your essay and basically extending the analysis of your essay. So a good way to get a point for synthesis is taking what you discuss in your essay and talking about its effects uh, on the decades after what you discuss trends. in it. The long-term trends of okay. your essay. Yeah. Can do. Yeah. So here's how you structure your intro. First, you have a hook. You grab the uh, reader's attention. Second, you provide some background information and historical context on whatever the question uh, has asked. So you'll notice in our example, we talk about new conservatism. So we're giving background about new conservatism. You define key terms. In, this, in our case, we define what new conservatism was. And then you state your thesis, which you got to remember, you do not want to restate the question. You can use words from the question in your thesis, but you want to take it one step further and state what you're going to prove in your essay. So here's how you structure the body of your DBQ. What you want to do is you want to group the documents into three categories. You could do two categories, you could do four categories, but we recommend three. Now, for each category, you want to have a separate body paragraph. And there are there, here's the structure of each body paragraph. First, you want to have a topic sentence giving an overview of that body paragraph and stating what you're going to discuss and how this body paragraph connects to the thesis. You always want to connect everything back to the thesis. Then you want to quote the document and you want to then analyze that quote. And finally, you want to do one of the following. You either want to state the intended audience of the document, you either want to st or state the purpose of the document, give historical context about the document, or give the author's point of view. Now, intended audience is just who the author of the document is trying to reach, who they're trying to talk to. Purpose is why are they saying what they're saying in the document and to what end are they saying it. Historical context is just discussing the historical events that were, going or, or, that were going on around the time of the document and that spurred the document to be written or to be stated. And author's point of view is just basically bias. So for every document that you're using, you want to repeat steps B through B. You always want to quote the document, you always want to analyze it, and you always want to do one of the four intended audience purpose, blah, blah, blah. And so if you do do three categories, you'd probably want to have two documents per category. So you'd want to do the steps B through D twice in every paragraph, as you'll see that we do in our example. Now, conclusion is not necessary for a DBQ, but it's an easy place to earn your points for synthesis. It's an easy point place to take your analysis one step farther and apply it to the future, apply the effects. That's all. It sounds fun. All right, so let's take what I just said and apply it to the actual DBQ that Frank and I wrote earlier this year. Yeah, so this was the DBQ for the 2014 to 2015 uh, APUSH class. So this will look familiar if you took the AP test last year. I don't know why you'd be watching this video if you did, but regardless, here we go. Our topic was explain the reasons why a new conservatism rose to prominence in the United States between 1960 and in 1989. Our first thing that we get is a graph showing unemployment and inflation during the different terms of the different presidents. This isn't an official document. It's just some background information, so you don't actually need to cite it. You can if you want to, but you won't get any points for showing this throughout your paragraphs. So without further ado, let's take a look at the documents themselves. The first one is from Barry Goldwater, who, if we remember, ran for president on the Republican ticket 
uh, during the 20th century. Frank, here's the thing. When I look at all these documents, I just feel overwhelmed. How do I approach them? Well, that's an excellent question, Abe, and that falls into one of our strategies, the one-sentence summary, or OSS, similar to SOS, but OSS. And what the one-sentence summary allows you to do is take the main theme of all of these different documents, one through six, and tax columnize them into a main idea, which you can then use when you're writing your essay. So let's return to that Barry Goldwater. Here the main idea is the expansion of big government undermines freedom. So you'd write that down right next to document That's one. That's my one sentence summary. That's your one sentence, that when you're thinking of your thesis and thinking of your points, instead of having to read the whole thing again, you can just go back to your one sentence. Perfect. So document two, Milton Friedman, economist, what he's saying here is that the free market system is superior to intervention from the federal government. For three, a uh, letter to Nelson Rockefeller, what this letter says is that the rule of law uh, is breaking down and the person in this letter is blaming it on drug abuse and welfare recipients. Document four, Jerry Falwell, another familiar name if you take in AP US history. What we see here is he's saying moral deterioration is happening inside the youth of America. Five, the Republican Party platform. Here we're seeing that America no longer has the international strength and prestige it once enjoyed. And finally, we can look to a member of the STOP era program and see that this person believes that feminists are threatening the well-being of households across the U.S. So Frank, now that I have my one sentence summary for each document, what do I do? Well, what you do is you go back to your main... Uh, your main prompt, what we have here in one, and you see what three different ways can you break down these documents based on the way that you've summarized them into three main points which would explain the reasons why a new conservatism rose to prominence in the United States. And that's exactly what we do in our example DBQ. We've written out this whole DBQ as an example based off the sentences I just said. And if you go to the uh, link in this video and in the description of this video, you'll actually be able to look through this DBQ and we point out everything from intended audience to purpose to contextualization. So you can really get a good idea of what makes up a level, a high level DBQ. So basically what you're saying is I write my one sentence summaries, I use those summaries to form the documents into three categories mm -hmm. and then I begin writing my essay. Absolutely. Sounds good. Excellent. Thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe and comment down below if you have any questions. And make sure to visit our website at www.socialsciencesyndicate.com. Merry Christmas.